What does the Bible say about contentment? I know a lot of us struggle with contentment. Some of us want a bigger house. We want better health. We want, I don't know, a nicer car. But some of us Neanderthals would just be happy with a 50 caliber ACOG scope that we can go in the backyard and shoot from the hip anytime that we want to. What's wrong with that? But the Bible says we should be content with such things that we have. And so we're going to talk about that here for the next few minutes. Don't go away. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. We're going to talk about contentment, and I think all of us need some contentment in our lives. That is for sure, and uh, it's a serious thing. There, now, there was a guy named Rockefeller. Now, listen, I understand all the history of who the Rockefellers are. I understand all that very well. Uh, but somebody asked this guy, they said, how much money does a man need to be happy? And uh, I, I thought it was a good question. How many, how many billions of dollars does a guy need before he's finally satisfied? And uh, Mr. Rockefeller gave a pretty interesting response to that. He said, all a man needs really is just a little bit more, just a little bit more. And I think that's the problem with us today. All of us just want a little bit more. We want just a little bit more than we already have. And we think that if we ever do get it, then we will be content. But the Bible says that that is not true. You see, it doesn't matter how big a house you get because you'll always want something bigger. It doesn't matter how nice a car you drive because you will always want something more. It does not matter how much money you have in the bank. You will always want more and more and more and more. And man is never satisfied, that's for sure. But the Bible says in 1 Timothy 6, verse 6, But godliness with contentment is great gain. And the problem with all these movie stars and all these billionaires and all these celebrities that we look at in our in our just disgusting carnal minds, uh, it's, this whole world is just backwards, man. They look at all the, the things that these people have and say, if I just have that much, I'll be content. But no, you can't be content. And here's the key word. I want to give you this, okay? The only way a person can be content is if they're godly. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question. Is Jesus enough? Is Jesus enough? You'll find that if you answer that question honestly, then that will kill all of your covetousness and help you to be a content person. Is Jesus enough? You know, I looking at this verse and looking at the, the word covetous, um, I, I want to tell you, th this is a serious business. Now, I want to I want to show you this, okay? In studying contentment, I kind of looked at the opposite, which is covetousness. And I looked at Hebrews 13, marriage is honorable and all in the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Okay, that that's a serious verse, and I, I believe that verse, and I think this is probably a part of the reason why there's so much judgment upon people today is because they went out outside the bounds of of God uh, for you know marriage and, and relationships with the opposite gender and stuff like that. But it even says here, let your conversation, and your conversation here is your lifestyle. That's not like having a conversation with another person. That this is your lifestyle. This is how you conduct yourself in your affairs. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And uh, really, I, I find I find it interesting as I look at this how that the word, a verse about marriage is right next to a verse about being content. And, uh, you know, a, a, there's a lot of marriages out there that suffer because one person in the party is not content. Uh, they don't not content with their husband or their wife. You know, really, it, it's been a common thing for a long time that, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of husbands will leave their wife for some younger, prettier woman. And uh, that causes a lot of trouble. Even if they don't do it, they start thinking that way. And, uh, you know, that that is a problem. You need to be content with what you have. I think a lot of marriages could, today could be content, could be fixed if everybody would just be content with what they have. And, uh, you know, there's a whole lot more I could say there. <laughs> but I do believe that contentment uh, with your lot in life could fix a lot of marriages for sure. 
In the book of Philippians chapter number four, the apostle Paul speaks about having to be content with such things that he has. And he says, uh, verse number 10 of Philippians four, I rejoice greatly uh, now that your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Uh, Meaning that, uh, you know, he said, I'm in jail. I'm off doing the work of God. And uh, you guys supported me financially, which I think every every missionary needs that, of course. Uh, You can't just go off in these other countries and get a job. So I think missionaries need support, and I think churches should do that. It says, uh, not that I was speaking respect of want. He's, he's saying, not listen, he said, I'm not saying that I'm like begging for money. He said, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. And uh, listen, we, we, we raise money around here, of course, on our channel, and I raise money for needs on the mission field, no doubt. But that's not what the Apostle Paul's saying here. He said, I, if I have a lot of support, praise the Lord. But if I don't have a lot of support, praise the Lord. He said, I, he said my contentment is not based on how much support that I have coming in. I think that's a good lesson for all of us in the ministry to understand. He says here in Philippians chapter 4, verse 12, For I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound every Everywhere and in all things, I, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and suffer need. Now, Philippians four thirteen is the most out of context verse ever used in the history of the Bible. I mean. <laughs> I really believe it. This thing is completely off the wall. He says, "I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me." This isn't talking about winning a national championship or winning a Super Bowl or running for president. That's not what this is talking about. This is talking about being content. This verse is about contentment. And I, I want to tell you, you can, you can be content through Christ. Remember, godliness with, with uh, contentment with godliness is great gain. That's, that's what it's all about. It's all about the Lord. And if, if, if you're not in a right relationship with the Lord, you're not going to be able to be content with anything, your marriage, your money, your, your life. Godliness with contentment is great gain. And he says right here, I can do all things with, uh, through Christ which strengthens me. That verse right there is about contentment, and there's no other way to look at it. That's what that verse is talking about. Now, let's be honest. Us Christians, we are tempted to look at the world's people and to think that, man, these people have got it so much better than us Christians. We're just struggling along, barely making ends meet. And we look at people on the internet who are flashing their lifestyle on their Instagram account, which oftentimes is a lie. They, they, you know, I know, I know guys out there who rent a house for a day at an Airbnb and and pretend like it's theirs as if they were some successful entrepreneur. And then they rent a car on, on uh, Venmo or whatever. <laughs> There's some app out there, uh, Turo or whatever, and they rent a car, and they and they they act real flashy so that they can get your attention. Uh, but listen, guys, we need to be content with what God's given us. We have to be, and uh, don't ever be tempted to uh, to envy the world. You know the old adage is that the grass is greener on the other side. But oftentimes, the other side, the only reason the grass is greener is because it's built over a septic tank. That's for sure. The Bible says here in Proverbs twenty three seventeen, "Let not thine heart envy sinners but be thou in the fear of the lord all day long for surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off how do i be content in this old world where us christians don't have the voice that we should and we don't get our way very much and and we and we 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 get persecuted sometimes i I remember just years ago when i was a teenager trying to get a job and saying i don't want to work on sundays uh that was a hard thing that was an obstacle i had to overcome to find something to do that made money and paid the bills but wasn't a retail job worked on that was a hard thing but a lot of these people went on and did that what kept me from going into all that well the bible says verse 28 there for surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off Friend, God is good. He's good, and he loves us. And we can be content with what God has given us in this world because of the grace and the goodness of an almighty God. And because of that, I can be content. I want to go back to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 6 and show you this verse right here. But godliness with contentment is a great gain. Listen, why, why are these movie stars and all these people... Uh, they're depressed. They're not doing well mentally. A lot of them are, boy, having breakdowns, and it's just not good. That's for sure. It's because they're going for gain. 
they are they're looking for gain. They want the houses. They want the fame. They want the money. They they want the the notoriety. That's gain. But the Bible says great gain can be had only by a person who's godly. Friend, I am a rich man, and I'm not rich financially. I'm not rich housewise. I mean, my car, my goodness, my cars are in terrible shape. <laughs> oh boy! But uh, I, I got a car right now. The windows don't even roll down in it, so <laughs> it's a mess. Uh, but you know what? I've got great gain. I've got great gain despite all that. You know why? Because I have godliness, godliness with contentment. And any person out there who has Christ can be content. And friend, that's what the Bible says is great gain. I'm richer than Bill Gates. I'm richer than Katy Perry. I'm richer than all the rap stars. You name them all. I am richer than those people because I have godliness with contentment. And to that, I say amen. So, hey, guys, this all this material comes from our book, the Dr. Matters Bible Topic Guide Book. Get you one of these today. These things are a blessing, and you will really enjoy these. And uh, we will, we're will we going to be doing a whole series of videos just like this. And so leave us a comment below. Let us know what you would like for us to talk about, and uh, that will be a great thing. So please take the time to hit the like button on this video. And if I will, ne- I will not be content until I get a million likes on this video. I will not be content. But whatever, maybe I'm just a big hypocrite. Anyway, God bless you, friend, and we will see you guys very soon. Have a great day. Yes! 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 All right. That was awesome. Oh. Hey, man. Hey, I got us a pizza for lunch. I love pizza. What kind of pizza did you get? Oh, man, you're going to like this one. You're going to like this one. One hour later. Three hours later. Mm. Approximately ten hours later. Wow, I feel a lot better after having read this book right here. This book is guaranteed to keep you from doing terrible things. Order your copy today. Rebecca, I need the tractor. Okay, she'll get it.